Rube, how did your weekend with no football go? Yeah, it was tough. It, a Sunday afternoon with no football takes a lot of getting used to, and I, I don't count that all-star game as football. I didn't watch any of that, uh, especially because it was on opposite the Sixers. So, uh, you know, a lot of Olympics, a little bit of Sixers, some college hoops, and uh, yeah, just try to get to next Sunday. And then and then comes the real challenge of no football for, for half a year. Yeah, then we have a while. Then you can just rewatch all the games from the 2021 season, right? Most of them, yeah. <laughs> right. I'll just, I'll I'll just, just re- I'm just going to keep rewatching curling until I can figure out the rules. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I do like curling. I, I do I too, but shuffle, yeah, it's it's I tough to figure, figure it out. out. Like I finally figured out biathlon, like just exactly how how it goes as far as the scoring, and you subtract a minute for each shot that you miss onto your total time, and and the different. I finally figured that out. Watch curling. They like, what is the point? Like, do you try to get the rock into the middle of the thing? But sometimes they're trying to knock another rock out. And then sometimes the other team, after the first team sends the rock down into the bullseye thing, they're like sweeping to get another rock out of there. I can't figure it out. Yeah. I mean, it's like big shuffleboard on the ice. I've never played shuffleboard, Dave. <laughs> oh, I play like table shuffleboard. Like, no, I've never played like, you know, you think of like, Boca, like down with the thing on the ground. Never done that. Okay. I would do that. Looks fun. I should mention this is the Eagle Eye podcast. This is a football podcast uh, with Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. And we do have a lot of football to get to today. We have Chris and Sims some and some curling. Chris Sims joining us in a little bit. Maybe we'll get his take on curling and maybe Jalen Hurts in the middle of that. We have some stayer goes at the end. Uh, anything else on curling before we move on to the football? I just had an idea that maybe they there are no rules. They just kind of make it up. That that can be lovely. Maybe that's I, it. I I think that's it. Anyway, let's talk some Eagles. <laughs> yeah, let's talk some Eagles. Well, let's talk some Houston Texans. Uh, Jonathan Gannon not getting a job, and all of a sudden, Lovey Smith is now the new head coach in Houston, which kind of tells you about that process. Now, Gannon might have dodged a bullet, uh, given the way that whole mess is going uh but what it means is jonathan gannon will be back in 2022 and i know some fans are upset about that i know fans aren't real happy with him and you and i i think have a a different view on this i still think he's a pretty good coach i didn't think he had the best year as a rookie defensive coordinator but i'm still bullish on on what he can do i thought there were times this year where he was you know too late to adjust to things i didn't like how passive they were at times, but overall, like, I, I think he's a pretty good coach. And I think there's a reason there was a lot of interest in him this off season. Yeah. And I, I mean, look, he's not perfect. Uh, and you know, one of the points I made, I was, <laughs> I was on with the morning show, Angela and I were screaming at each other about Gannon for, for 10 minutes uh, this morning was, you know, he, he's a rookie defensive coordinator and he needs to be evaluated that way. And I don't know how many rookie defensive coordinators, or have a top 10 defense. There's, there's not a lot. And uh, I think I wrote this uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jim Johnson, who's like this, you know, he's a legendary figure here for what he did. His first defense was 20, 22nd in the league. They had Trot, they had Doc, they had Bobby Taylor, they had Troy Vincent, they had Hugh Douglas for, for part of the season. He ended up getting hurt. I mean, the talent level on that defense was incredible. Gannon did the best he could with the personnel he had, I believe. And they were, um, you know, it made sense to play the way they did. Um, they allowed the third fewest long touchdown drives in the league, uh, third fewest 75 yard touchdown drives. They were fifth in yards per play allowed. Um, they, they allowed the third fewest long plays, big plays, uh, 40 yards or more. I believe it was maybe 30 yards or more, one or the other. Um, so I think he, he did what he, what he could with, without a ton of talent and, um, was it perfect? No. Could he do better? Yeah. And I expect he will, but for a rookie D coordinator to come in and really have, and look, I know Josh Sweat and Hargrave made the pro bowl. Hargrave had a great first month. Sweat had a really good second last month, but Darius Slay was the only elite player on this defense. The only really consistently great player on this defense. And to, to do what this defense did, they held 10 out of 16 opponents to 18 or fewer points. No other team did that. Or no, but nobody did it more. I think somebody, I think the the Bills also had 10 games where they held a team to 18 or fewer points. So, you know, you're, you're talking about 
a defensive coordinator whose whose team was really bad against two of the greatest quarterbacks ever, Brady and Mahomes. And it was bad in a couple other games, Dallas and the Raiders mainly. But for for the most part, for a first year coach without a ton of talent, um, did as well as you could imagine. So um, is is he the perfect coach? No. Uh, is he going to get better? I would think so. Um, should fans be happy that he's coming back? Absolutely. Yeah, and just for continuity purposes, you know, and, and I get that maybe they could have upgraded. Maybe if you bring in whoever, Vic Fangio or or one of these guys who's been around a long time, they're probably more equipped to be a defensive coordinator right now. And I get that. But it seems like Nick Sirianni really wants this coaching staff to grow to, together. And we don't know how long Gannon will be here based on the interest we saw in him this year. He might be gone next offseason. But, yeah, I'm kind of with you. And and that's not to, to take away what he did wrong because there were some times where I thought, man, he's had a horrible game plan or he adjusted, but it took him too long to adjust. And there were times where the passive stuff annoyed me because – I don't know what the alternative was, but it couldn't have been worse than getting your butt kicked by by Tom Brady and, and Patrick Hummel at the rate they did. I, I mean, they, he had to try something different, and he didn't do that. Um, so, yes, that stuff bothered me, but I still think he had some pretty good game plans this year, and he did adjust. He was willing to adjust, and he figured out a way to make it work with Fletcher Cox. We've talked about that before. That was a, a – touchy subject there for a while so i i think he did a decent job i don't think i was a little surprised to see how much uh head coaching interest he garnered i mean i I don't think i understand why because he's he is someone who people think of as an up-and-comer he connects with the players and uh, he i think he has all the tools to be a, a head coach i didn't think the product he put in the field was worthy of teams thinking I'm going to hire this guy right now for this result. But uh, overall, I, I saw enough signs to be encouraged. And now this is the off season where they can start to really figure out the types of players he wants here. I think there was some, uh, some odd fits this year based on what he wanted to do. And I know he says he has no scheme. He has a scheme. He's willing to mold it, which I think is good. Uh, But ideally you want to have players in those positions where he sees them playing and another year into this, I think they'll start to get to a little bit more. Yeah, I would think so. And that's the other thing that cracks me up is people are like, you know, Gannon sucks. Let's, you know, how, how come they weren't any better? And then the same people want to draft defensive guys with each pick in the first round. Well, that tells you where the talent level is on defense. But um, no, I, I agree with everything you say. I don't think we really, I mean, I think you're you're a little, I don't. I don't think there's anything he could have done to shut down Pat Mahomes and um, uh, and Tom Brady um, at that point, he was what five weeks in to his, you know, they were five weeks into a new, a new coaching staff, a new team. So um, yeah, we yeah. can disagree to, we can agree to disagree. I, I, I mean, I just would have tried something else. And if you get burnt in a different way, you, you tried something else and you got burned a different way. It was just seeing them get burnt the same way over and over and over again. That was frustrating. And I don't know if they would have done any better, but at least if he tried it, he could sit back and be like, well, this didn't work either. Yeah. I mean, but if you believe that what you're doing is, is the best thing. And I mean, ultimately they held Mahomes to what, 28 points. What did he average? 33. Uh, I think the same with Brady. I mean, I, I just think that it makes sense when you don't have, you don't really have blitzers. Um, you don't have, ball hawks in the secondary and slay you know is 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 kind of a playmaker but um it makes sense to legislate against big plays and and make this guy beat you 15 plays down down the field and maybe he'll he'll screw up or you got to stop on third down and you know for the most part they didn't do that but i still think it makes the most sense we can go around and around on it but um i hear what you're saying and you know i i think look i think next year's a big year for gannon and for the defense he's going to have better you know talent and he's going to be another year into it. And um, they should be. And also, I mean, the offense did. You look at the playoff game, the offense didn't do many favors. Now you have 31 points. But after the first two drives, the next drive was like a 39 yard. It was after a turnover. And then the one after that was after the short punt. Um, so uh, the offense has to be better. Field position has to be better. 
you know, when you're when you're ranking in yards is way better than you're ranking in points. That that tells you that the other side of the ball, we talk about complimentary football, it's not happening. Um, you know, if you're 10th in both, then then it's kind of working. So anyway, enough again. And um, it, I think, you know, it'll be interesting to see where where they go from here as a defense. And I and, uh, can't wait to see that. Yeah, it, they don't have to figure it out now, which is good. They don't have to try to fill that spot. My get, I don't know what they would have done, but Denard Wilson might have been the next guy up, the defensive backs coach. But it, it really looks like the Eagles are going to keep this staff together. We haven't heard of any changes yet. I, I think Sirianni really likes the staff he had as a rookie coach. It's kind of rare for the Eagles to not change any positions, even when, you know, the Eagles were good. <laughs> you know, they were – they this team changes position coaches quite a bit. They're not scared to even in a successful year, swap some things out. Yeah. It's an interesting point. I'll have to go back and see the last time that happened where, you know, from the position coach level and up um, there were no changes. It's, it's been a while. Um, and, you know, during Andy's tenure, guys were leaving for promotions all the time mm. uh, during Doug's area. He was just firing guys all the time because they weren't working out. Um, but there's something to be said for continuity. And um, I think, you know, the senior bowls when you kind of hear about a lot of coaching changes and, you know, teams are looking at guys and they're talking to guys. I think the fact that we're here in mid-February, almost mid-February, and we haven't heard any changes, I, I wouldn't expect any at this point. It's still possible. Um, but, uh, you know, staffs, I mean, there's still some new coaches who are putting their staffs together. So uh, anything is possible. But uh, you, you know that Nick would love to keep this group together. Yeah, if you were, and I don't want to fire anyone right now, but if, if you were to look at uh, look at these coaches and think about making a change, what what spots would you consider? I'm not sold on Aaron Moorhead. I, I'm with you on that. I, I, you know, I like Aaron, and and I, I you know, I, I just you just haven't seen the the progress. I mean you haven't seen anybody really develop. And I don't think Jalen Rager would be a, a great wide receiver under any coach. And maybe the same is true for Jay draw, but we really haven't seen anybody. And I think Devonte Smith, he well, was going to give him Quez. You give him Quez. Sure. Yeah. He came a long way. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how much of that is, is the coach or how much is just pure talent that the kid has uh, and an ability to run. Um, but, you know, Devonte was going to have that kind of year, whoever his coach was, I, I think maybe that's not fair, but I just I don't, think I could have coached him last year and he would have been all right. Uh, yeah. I, I, I really think um, I just haven't seen, I haven't seen the growth um, from, from different guys that you'd like to see. Um, and, you know, I mentioned Michael Clay before I, I, I thought special teams for I me, mean, you look at the end of the year. I mean, it was kind of a mess. They were, they were pretty good during the season. Would they finish in Gosselin's thing, like 17th? Uh, um, 21st, I think. 21st. Yeah. Um, I'd keep Michael Clay. I, I, I understand why he did that. But uh, overall, like, I, I thought they were okay. I didn't think they were great. And I don't. a big problem with their return game was honestly just Rager. And yeah. I doubt it's Michael Clay making that call on his own. So notice that I'm, I'm firing every coach that had something to do with Jalen Rager. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Yeah. So I, Rager's it, get, you're, you got Rager getting people fired here. I know it's uh, it's so tough sometimes, you know, we don't talk to these guys very often. We don't see practice after training camps over. Um, and, and one, one other thing about Moorhead um, he, he's not, it, I guess during training camp, he just hasn't really impressed me. I think he's, he's, very much a player's coach. The players really like him. I just don't see, I don't see like a really high level of coaching happening. Um, From Moorhead? Yeah. I don't know. I, I actually, I, I, you know, this year was our second year with him. So I didn't notice as much, but I remember in 2020 being impressed with him. Some of the new okay. drills he brought in how hands-on he was. It's a, it, but some of that, sometimes that's tough to tell too. It's really tough to tell. It, it's very hard to tell. Um, I'll give you well, another name. Tracy Rocker. Yeah. And it's, it's a tough one because the Eagles have gone through so many defensive line coaches, but that's a unit that underperformed all year. I, I Josh Sweat took a step, but he, he seemed poised to take a step anyway. You know, 
I just didn't see enough from that group. And it wasn't and that he's... big a step. I mean, that sweat. sweat. Well, it, it was, I mean, he went from six to seven and a half sacks. I think he became a more consistent rusher in the second half of the year. I, I still don't think he had a great year. I know he made a Pro Bowl team, but I mean, he didn't really do much of anything the first half of the season. So, yeah, uh, I, I he improved. I, I'm just trying to look at improvement versus regression in, in some cases. And he, Rocker's also kind of a weird fit for not to be an ageist, but he's the oldest position coach on the staff outside of Jeff Stoutland, who, you know, he's kind of in, in his own category at this point. It was, it, to me, it was kind of a strange hire. I think, I think time. Nick just wanted, you know, he had the veteran guy on offense. I think he wanted the veteran guy on Maybe. defense. I assume Maybe. that's what it was, you know, have both line coaches be that veteran guy. Uh, but I, I haven't been particularly impressed with, with Rocker. Again, Derek Barnett had a, just a completely lost season. Um, Fletcher regressed, although that could be just getting older. Um, Hargrave, second half, I know he's getting double team more, but, you know, he was invisible for good chunks of the season after that hot start. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I, – but like you said, I mean, they've changed D-line coaches so many times. I mean, there's a good chance they're going to have, you know, two new defensive linemen, one in the first round and one like on day two. I mean, at, at the least, they could take a, a tackle and an end in the first round. Uh, yeah, I want to, I don't want those guys to turn into Derek Barnett. You know, I just, but they've been through so many D line coaches. You know, is it, is it the, what came first, the chicken or the egg? I, there's no way for me to know. I have not been particularly impressed with Rocker, though. I, I'm with you. Yeah, it, it's a tough thing because sometimes for continuity, it's like you just keep the guy and you just hope that it, things get better. Yeah. It's dangerous to do that, but you can't turn over. I mean, we saw, I mean, the best example is when with the receiver coaches, like think about Nelson Aguilar's career here. He had a different receiver coach every year. And that, that's not to say he would have had some Hall of Fame career here, but I think it made things tough for him. Yeah, and some of them were, were not very good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he had a new one when he went to Oakland and then he had a new one, um, you know, in, in new England. I mean, so he's had, he's been in the league what, since 15 and had a different coach every year. Right. Seven. I, I think. Yeah. Cause Mike grow is only one year. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, that's not an easy thing. Hey, it's the same with Jalen Hurts. We're getting off topic a little. He's never had the same position coach two years in a row. So it's good that Brian Johnson will be back. Um, and, and he had a little, you know, interest, uh, outside interest. But um, I think these guys will all be back. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Coaches can get better, too. They learn the personnel. They learn the head coach. They learn more about the people around them, their assistants and, or, or uh, their coordinator. And, you know, and, and hopefully they get better. But Moorhead's the one I, I just – I really don't know, but I kind of have a feeling maybe he's not the ideal guy. Yeah, and he's one of the few holdovers from the previous staff. Right. I mean, of the main position coaches, it's just him and Stoutland. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's something that Nick liked. Uh, something Nick liked in, in uh, Aaron Moorhead, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and we know Stout was like a no-brainer for him. I'm sure Moorhead was one where he kind of thought about it a little bit more, especially with his background as a receivers coach, I wonder how that factored into it. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, one interesting side note, you know, Aaron Moore had coached uh, Christian Kirk in college. Mm -hmm. So maybe free agent. free agent, one of the better ones. I, I like Christian Kirk. I think he's pretty good. Um, so maybe, maybe there's some value there. Maybe he'll do some recruiting. Yeah, unless they're going to pay him more. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that really matters. Work with Aaron Moorhead, take a bigger contract. Probably take the bigger contract. Uh, but we were mentioning coaches there. And Doug Peterson, we already talked about We had that bonus pod last week. But we saw his press conference down in Jacksonville on Saturday. A pretty lengthy press conference. I think it lasted, like, what, 50 minutes? Yeah. Something like that. Not a and lot for us to really care about. But he did another was, interview after that it was it was interesting it was good to see him so upbeat it's been a while since we saw that edition of doug peterson um you know we heard all the same stuff we heard in 16 here all the exact same 
uh, things. Um, he's a good coach and, and uh, it's good for Trevor Lawrence. Well, you know, it's a really tough place to win. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. Hopefully they give him a fair shot. Uh, I don't think he's got a GM who can really pick players very well. Um, they are going to hire someone above him. That was kind of a weird thing to, to watch. Uh, see Trent Balky as, as a shod sits there and says, yeah, we're going <laughs> to hire someone above you. I'm sure he knew. Um, the one thing I thought was really interesting was, you know, and the word Eagles never came up in the entire press conference, not once in a question or in an answer. Um, I don't think he was intentionally trying to, it wasn't like us with, you know, the quarterback, we, we can't say the word, but um, he said you know, his he, name. He, he's moved on. And, uh, but he did talk about how much he needed the year off and how he was, he was burned out and, and uh, he needed to reconnect with his family. And, um, you know, that was, you know, his, his brother, uh, Craig died of had cancer and he had a grand, his first grandkid and one of his other sons got married. So there's a lot going on personally. And um, the Doug Peterson we saw in 2020, that guy needed a break, you know? Yeah, it's good for him. He looks refreshed. Wish him success down there. It'll be fun. He, the Jag, we don't know the, the schedule yet, but the Jaguars will be here in some part of the season. Seeing Doug Peterson at the link in a different hat or a different visors and pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, it really will. Um, and you know, like I wrote a, I wrote a piece. It just it, it blows my mind that uh, he's the ninth. I think I said this the other day. The ninth consecutive Eagles head coach to get another head coaching job after getting fired by the Eagles or in, in Vermeil's case, stepping down. But um, every coach since, uh, since Ed Kayat in 1972 has gotten another job at some point as a head coach, which is crazy, you know, cause I mean, so many teams are just looking for that, that hot new coordinator, you know, the Eagles have never hired. Who's the last coach the Eagles hired who had previous head coaching experience. I guess it was Marion Campbell. And that was 1982. So it was 40 years yeah, well, ago. previous NFL head coaching experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chip had been a head coach. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting, but I wish Doug luck. He's going to need it down there.